last week, I was sent some amazing videos of you guys singing the Fruit of the Spirit song. So this morning, we thought we would share a few of those videos today. So enjoy. Good Lord, peace, patience. I miss you. Love, joy, peace, patience. <clears throat> Thank you for putting that video out. Video out. We really enjoyed it. We hope we see you again. Before we go any further and start our review this week. I'm going to ask Brooklyn to come in and help me show you some hand motions to our Fruit of the Spirit song, okay? This is what a lot of people um, refer to this as the hand jive. So we're going to show you on the course what you can do with your hands. Are you ready, Brooklyn? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We go, we have our hands, we have our knees here. So we're going to go love, joy, peace, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. One more time. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. One more time. It's a little tricky, and I almost have to sing it for me to even get it right. So we may speed it up a little this time. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you need to, you can always rewind this video to watch that again. But right now, we give you the Fruit of the Spirit song. Of the spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. If you wanna be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. You wanna be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. You wanna be a watermelon? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the spirit's not a lemon. If you wanna be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. If you wanna be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the spirit's not a grape. You wanna be a grape? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Last week we talked about the first four fruit of the Spirit. This week we're starting with number five, kindness. Our power verse was found in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 and it said, instead be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. You see as Christians, 
We are to see people that others do not see. We are to serve people in need and stand out in the world because of our kindness. Now, before we learn about the next fruit of the Spirit, I have a question for you. Have you ever known someone who was selfish? Have you ever known someone who was so focused on themselves and their own needs that they never really paid attention to the needs of others? I'm sure you can all think of somebody like that. But it's kind of sad because some people just don't know how to show kindness to others. But kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. Our story, the week that we talked about kindness, was found over in the book of Matthew, chapter 20. Jesus and his disciples were leaving the city of Jericho, and a large crowd was following them. As Jesus and the disciples were walking down the road, two blind beggars were sitting on the side of the road. These men were completely blind, and they couldn't see anything. In those days, being blind meant you couldn't have a job. So these men had to sit on the side of the road and beg for money. That day, when Jesus was walking by, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. They were yelling at Jesus as he was going by. Because Jesus was still teaching a large crowd of people, the disciples very quickly turned to the blind beggars and yelled, Be quiet! That wasn't very kind of the disciples, was it? Of course not. And that didn't stop those beggars from yelling. When the disciples asked him to be quiet, you know what they did? They only yelled louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. That's when Jesus stopped to talk to them. He said, what do you want me to do for you? See, Jesus cared about these two men. Even though he was in the middle of teaching and doing some very important things, he stopped what he was doing to show kindness to these beggars. When he asked them what they wanted him to do for them, they said, we want to see. And at that instant, Jesus touched their eyes and he healed the man and they could see. It was a miracle. The blind beggars were no longer blind beggars. They were healed. From then on, those men followed Jesus. You see, Jesus showed kindness to the beggars and that is exactly what we need to do for others. We need to be kind to others like Jesus was kind to others. You see, there are people all around you in need. If you will open your eyes and be looking for them, you will see them. The new kid sitting in your lunchroom all by himself. The kid on the playground that is being made fun of by others. The classmate who dropped her books in the hallway and can't pick them all up because she's trying to get to class and everybody else is rushing around her. You see, people who need kindness shown to them are all around you. You just have to open your eyes and look for them. Then, when you see them, Kindness does something about their need. Can you imagine if Christians displayed the fruit of kindness every single day? What if every Christian chose to serve every person they came upon who needed kindness? I imagine that this entire world would be different. So many people would be helped, healed, and blessed. When you demonstrate kindness to people, others will quickly identify you as a Christian. They will know you are a Christian because you have the fruit of kindness in your life. When people notice the difference in your life, it will give you a chance to give God the glory and help them understand how they can have Jesus in their lives too. Right now, we are going to stop our review and we are going to play a quick game called The Great Cookie Lickoff. Hey kids, what time is it? It is time for the great cookie lick off. This is a game that you can do at home. All you need is a pack of sandwich cookies. They can be Oreo, they can be the vanilla sandwich cookies, whichever flavor that you like. Find somebody to compete against you. And what you're gonna do, everyone hold up your cookies. The first one that can lick all of the white cream off of their cookies will be declared the winner of the Great Cookie Lick-Off Challenge. Now, you cannot scrape it with your teeth. You have to lick it off 
with your tongue. So when I say go, you will start to go. And I'm going to be watching closely to make sure you're not using your teeth. Are you guys ready? Uh-huh. On your marks. Get set and go. Oh, Aiden is the winner really quick. Give Aiden a big round of applause. Number six, goodness. Our power verse was found in Ephesians 5.1. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do because you are his dear children. Have you ever known someone who was just bad? Someone who seemed to never do good? They never do the right thing? Sadly, some people just don't know how important goodness really is. But goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. In the Bible story we, that we learned about in John 5, Jesus was an incredible example of God's goodness when he healed a lame man. See, God is the only one who is truly good. He's the only one who is perfect. Remember, God created the world and Adam and Eve, and then he told them what to do to live a good life on earth. He told them what to do, but they still did the opposite. They did bad. They sinned, and humans have been doing bad and sinning ever since. It's human nature to do the wrong thing. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. You might hear that and say, well, that's just great. That's what I wanted to hear. A lesson on goodness that basically just tells me I can't be good no matter how hard I try? What's the point in this lesson anyway? Why is goodness a fruit of the Spirit in the first place? Well, I'm glad you asked because here's the thing. You may not be good on your own, but with God's help, you can be good. And here's how. When you want to get warm in the winter, do you stay outside or do you go inside and get close to the fireplace or to a heater vent in the floor? When you want to eat, do you go to the bedroom or to the bathroom or do you go to the kitchen where the food's kept? See, when you want to be hugged by your mom, do you go to your dad? No, you go to your mom. Well, when you want something, you go to the source. You go to the place where the thing you want comes from. So if you want to be good, and God is the one who is good, where should you go? That's right, if you want to be good, you need to get close to God. That just makes sense. When you are close to God, you naturally become better. See, goodness flows naturally from a heart that is close to God. When you spend time with God, getting close to Him by spending time in His presence, God's goodness will naturally flow through you. You'll find yourself doing good, the right things, instead of the wrong things. The more time you spend with God, the more you become like Him. Now, we're going to talk about number seven, faithfulness. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. That's found over in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. Faithfulness is a rare quality in today's world. It's easy to be faithful when things are going great, but when things get rough, it's common for people to quit. They may quit their job. They may quit being friends with you. They may even quit church. But throughout his life, there was a guy in the Bible named Joseph who had opportunities to doubt God and do the wrong things. He could have quit on God and his plan. But instead, Joseph was very faithful every moment of his life. No matter what he faced, he was faithful and he faced some hard things. But see, life is made up of moments, good ones, bad ones. We just have to trust God in every moment. We have to be faithful in every moment. So when you're struggling in school every day to make good grades, you have to stay faithful. You have to keep working hard. When you are trying your best to make new friends, but you keep finding yourself sitting alone at recess, stay faithful because God will help you out. When you get in trouble for something you didn't do, don't whine and complain and throw a fit. Just stay faithful to God and pray that God will help you. When you're faithful to God and obey Him, He will help you reach your potential. He will help you to be the boy or the girl that He wants you to be. See, God has great plans for each of you. 
and when it seems too tough to handle and like there's no way anything good can come out of your situation, you have to stay faithful to God in every moment. Good morning. Since we have been talking about the fruit of the Spirit, we made a fruit salad. Our mother chopped up the fruit. We, we will show you what we, we put in the fruit salad. First, we put a banana. Second, we put an apple. And third, we put strawberries. We put pineapple too. And in the dressing, we put pineapple juice, lemon, and honey. I will now pour this on our fruit salad. Easton, will you please, Easton, can you please mix it with that spoon? Now we will try it. enjoyed reviewing with you guys this morning. Challenge for the week. If you have something that you would like for me to be praying with you about this week, send me a message or post it in the comments. Also, last week I enjoyed seeing every video that I received of you guys singing the Fruit of the Spirit song. It really made my day. This week your challenge is send me a picture of you and whoever you watch this video with. Maybe it was your brothers, maybe it was your sister, maybe it was your mom and dad or a grandparent, but I would love to see a picture of you with them. And next week, I'll make sure that we put your picture at the front of next week's video when we finish our review of the Fruit of the Spirit. And then the following week is a very special time because we will be celebrating Easter, and I have a very special special message plan for Easter weekend. So send me a picture, send me a prayer request if there's something that you would like for me to pray about, and I look forward to hearing from you guys today. Have a blessed Sunday.